Okay, slightly different title. I need to signal with two kinds of trial and error. This is an exercise in low rationality game theory. Very low, actually. Uh, and I thought it would be appropriate for Pat's birthday. Why um, low rationality game theory? Okay. Appropriate because of pioneering work in 1960, Soupies and Atkinson, who applied learning models for uh, uh, games, right? uh, a book that was uh, 20 or 30 years before its time. Uh, now, uh, low rationality game theory is a, a research area that uh, has a lot going on in it. Uh, but uh, this, this was where it started. Okay, I'm going to talk about two kinds of trial and error learning. Um, the first is reinforcement learning of the Kernstein Roth Erev kind. Um, and it goes like this um, there's a repeated choice situation. Uh, on any trial, the probability of a specific choice is proportional to the accumulated rewards from that choice in the past. This is the second kind of trial and error learning that I call probe and adjust. Um, repeated choice situation. Most of the time an agent just keeps doing the same thing, but once in a while probes, that is, does something at random. Um, if uh, the probe gets a higher payoff than the agent got the last time, she switches to the new action. Uh, if it's a lower payoff, she switches back. If it's a tie, she flips a coin. Okay. Doesn't have to be fair, could be biased, as long as it gives positive probability uh, to each alternative. Okay. These, are, um, these are rather different types of trial and error learning. Um, Pulls apart, uh, they're uh, not uh, good for all of the same things. Some are better at some tasks than others. Uh, they have different mathematical properties, so they make a nice contrast. I'm going to apply them to signaling games, as introduced by David Lewis in Convention. Signaling games, for our purposes today, will have this structure. Um, nature chooses a situation with uniform probability from some set of situations, or sometimes are called states of nature, S1 through Sn. A sender observes the situation, chooses a signal from some set of signals, T1 through Tm. The receiver observes the signals and guesses the situation from uh, the original states. Okay. A slight generalization of David Lewis because uh, he concentrated on the case where n equals m, but we'd like to look at the more general case. Uh, of course, we could generalize this much more in interesting ways, but not today. Um, both players have common interest. They are paid one if the act matches the situation zero otherwise. <coughs> Now we have two kinds of trial and error, and you could, if you were treating this as a game, simply apply trial and error learning to strategies in the game. Um, so a strategy for a sender <coughs> tells the sender what to do in each situation. A strategy for a receiver tells the receiver what to do for each signal received. Um, but that really requires that the agents think of the whole business as a game and have a strategy for the game. And that's contrary to the spirit of low rationality game theory. So instead of applying um, trial and error to the strategies, we'll apply them to the acts. So for each situation the sender can observe, there will be a trial and error learning process uh, for each uh, signal that the receiver can observe, there'll be a trial and error learning 
process. And these will all be interacting with one another. Okay. Um, let me start with reinforcement learning of the type uh, that I talked about. In the simplest signaling game, um, two states or two situations, um, two signals. We can visualize this as an earned process. So the sender has an earn for each state. The receiver has an earn for each signal. We'll have to start it out somehow. So we can start out the, um, the earns with uh, one ball of each kind. Right? So uh, the A ball and the B ball are for signal A and signal B. Um, the one ball and the two ball, of course, are for the states. Um, and we'll then uh, run the process with reinforcement. It's inessential that we start with one ball uh, of each type in each of these urns, uh, as long as we start with a positive number of balls for each. What happens is um, that with this setup, we have convergence to a signaling system uh, with probability one. Uh, by a signaling system, I mean uh, uh, an equilibrium in which uh, perfect information transfer takes place. That is, in the limit, you have the sender mapping um, each state onto one signal with probability one, the receiver mapping each signal to a guess with probability one, the guesses are always right. If you start out with uh, equal number of balls of each type in the urn, then you can get with equal probability to each signaling system. Uh, but if you start out with unequal numbers of balls, you still with probability one get to such a signal signaling system. So learn to signal with probability one. How about probe and adjust uh, applied to this game? Now probe and adjust works by probing, but you have to remember what you got the last time. So uh, the sender has to remember for each situation that he can be confronted with what he got the last time when he was confronted with that situation and what he did. Uh, and likewise for the receiver for each signal. So uh, the whole system uh, has to remember a map from situations to signals and a map from signals to guesses. This looks like a strategy, but this is a memory snapshot of the system of what the sender and the receiver have to remember. So if you hit situation three in a long string, you still have to remember what you did when last time you were confronted with situation one and what you got when you uh, did that act. Okay. Um, I'll assume that uh, probes are relatively rare and then cheat a little bit. Um, that is, I'll assume that neither sender or receiver probes and adjusts at the, at the same time. This assumption can, uh, can be taken away a little bit later. Uh, but for what I'm going to say here, it will be convenient. So think of the process as nature just selects some of, someone to probe and adjust at right, a given time. Well then, again, agents learn to signal in the appropriate sense with probability one. Um, there's an embedded Markov chain, if you look at the pre-probe and post-adjust states, right, and look at the transitions, that is transitions are Markov chains. Um, and the signaling systems are the unique absorbing states of this Markov chain. And it's easy to show that there's a positive probability path from any state to a signaling system. Actually, in this game, it only takes two probes to get from any place to a signaling system. Um, so we learn to signal in this sense 